Okay folks, Brian here from Northwind Garage. So I just want to take a couple steps back folks. You see where these two upward post sawmill head assembly front post, they had these, uh, which is all well and good, they're for the bottom. The bottom is open, down, way down here on the bottom. And I kind of reversed the order and I put it in through the top where they have this welded plate on here. and. Just imagine down on the bottom of the post being open. They want you to put the install these and then slide them in from the top. Well, I kind of just did it backwards because these corners are rounded off nice, kind of similar to this. So they slid in very well without doing any damage or anything like that. So um, I kind of just skipped that step, but definitely follow the directions the way you're supposed to. I didn't realize they did it until after I'd already done it and I kind of have a tendency to get ahead of myself and that and that's what I did on it so I you know I don't want anybody to void their warranty or, or bust anything before they even get the mill together so just try to follow the directions by using these plates on the open ends and then sliding uh, the front posts in from the top down I just kind of reversed order I just kind of got ahead of myself and uh, went ahead and and did it without so and fortunately enough I didn't break anything but I, I suppose you could and that's probably the reason why they send these little gadgets to get you through without having any problems and uh, you know I just kind of skipped a step so I, I wanted you folks to know that so uh, you just kind of went by the directions so you didn't get any trouble uh, get into any trouble that way so now we're going to install the battery box. I've kind of been holding off on this, but I guess there's really no need to. So I'm going to go ahead and get on it. Big chunk of ice froze in there. That made quick work of that. So basically these holes line up. Get the throttle cable out of, out of the way. We're gonna be installing that today too. I don't know what way that goes, but we'll, we'll definitely find out which way. Of the days out. So these holes line up beautifully. You got your hardware package for the battery. Comes with the cables, uh, battery post, uh, terminal bolts, and they're calling for a washer on every bolt going through the top. Bolt facing down. Uh, let's see if I can find that in the directions here. I kind of studied up a little bit ahead of time here, so. So that does show that going through here. Shows this cable going through here. So when we get ready to do the handle, that'll be all set. All right, where are we at here? Back to the battery box. There we are. Okay, so M6 by 20 bolts.
So that's an M6. By 20 bolt. Flat washer on each bolt. And down through the top. Ten millimeter socket on a long extension. I'm just gonna thread them through that plastic. The plastic has enough of a friction fit, so it holds the bolts a little bit. So these nylon lock washers are all going on the bottom there. So you don't want to get too crazy with a impact wrench, folks. Just like that. You'll crack the plastic or over tighten it. Basically. We're relying on those washers to hold us in place so they don't vibrate loose. So now, cables. So one side has a small hole in it and one side has a bigger hole in it. And the ground cable, they're both the same. So, Negative black cable goes on the same bracket as the key switch. The key switch. So that's right here. So I'm going to take this out. Now, it didn't come with a star washer. Um, something like this I would normally recommend a star washer on or something to get us a good ground because that's definitely going to be relying on a connection there. So I might come back and put a star washer on that and uh, have a good surface. For that to ground on. Uh, so this is going to attach the negative battery side, battery post, and then the other connection is down here on the starter solenoid. So I got to get a socket wrench. And that being the, the smaller side, I believe it'll go in this side, but we'll check it. So the benefits of having an electric start, folks, is that 
I could put some 12 volt LED lights on this sawmill and uh, that would be very beneficial to me like in the the winter months there goes my lock washer so I want to put that I want to put this battery post on there just kind of pre-bend this a little bit Wow, they don't give you a lot of room to get on that. So this spade, well, they don't give you a lot of room to get on that folks. Try again here. So they're saying to come in from the top. Wow. There is not much room there. Um it needs like a 90 degree one to be able to go in there like that to get in there now there's another terminal down below here for the starter solenoid so I'm gonna hold off on that folks I'm gonna hold off on that um, I do not need anything shorten out. Um, and that's where it could happen, potentially. So, we're gonna just bypass this for now. I'm gonna have to brainstorm about this a little bit. I don't really wanna call and complain. I'm just going to retighten it, folks, so I don't lose any of the hardware. Just so this is just the ground, so it ain't going to hurt nothing. But we're going to have to do something about that because that it should have like a 90 degree, so I can go in there and tie onto that without having any shorting problems. That goes into the starter, so that is positive. So. But if that did short out, the starter would not disengage because uh, that's the output of the solenoid. So we're going to have to revisit this. But the uh, battery box is in. We'll move forward here. Don't want to hang out on that too much. This other one, seven millimeter, ten, another ten right there. And we put this on vibration meter.
vibration meter for trailers, motors, equipment, and machinery. It says to track the service life of all non-engine applications, automatic vibration activated recording. No power required, sealed waterproof, lifetime battery, easy installation. Easy installation, no wiring needed. So it works off of vibration. It says to cut wire loop before installing. Now if I don't drop these little guys. Just small enough, very droppable. I don't know if I can get in there with that, but that's a seven millimeter little tiny thing. has to cut the wire to activate it so I'm gonna wait I don't want to activate it until I got the mill all together and ready to go so I'm gonna skip that step but there's the hour meter okay so now they're showing two washers on top silly me All right, back on track here. It's calling for these little washers up front, which makes sense. Keep it from splitting that plastic. All right, folks. Definitely something you don't want to over tighten. Now, the handle. Well, the handle, right here. So it's these uh, 10 by 70 millimeter. That's 70 millimeter. Plus or minus. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. 
phenomenal. So the nuts go on the back side and uh, it shows washers, but they gave me these uh, washer integral, it's all one piece, washer, nut, nylon, lock nut. Washer, nylon, lock nut. So that's that. Those are 14 millimeter, folks. Steal a battery from my other one. All right, so I don't know how I'm gonna like this. This seems like, um, I'm gonna have to actually get to saw and wood before I realize where I need it. So I'm just gonna, guesstimate where I might like it. I'm going to call it there. And we'll adjust it if we need it. Have a look at the book. So for ground mount setup, so we want to go with the second hole here, I reckon. So this goes pointing up. This points up like this. A little bit of a puzzle piece here. A little bit. Okay folks, so it's a bit of a challenge to get that inside washer in the way they're showing it. They're actually showing it on the outside. Okay.
they're actually showing it on the outside so that's what we're going to roll with we'll put this like this if i can hang on to them extra washers. Guess I'll just reverse this the way it's showing it. I'm just doing this the way the book is showing it folks. Um I want to be true to what Woodman, Woodland Mills has studied and designed. What do I do with the other nut? Can I lose a nut? There it is. Okay, so the book's showing it like this. This one I'm not going to tighten. Because that's got to be able to move. Yeah. Cable thimble. Idle position. Okay, folks, so there's a cap down here. And we gotta adjust this. So that should be at the idle position. Tighten that. Let's see how that goes. Wow, that's got a rugged spring on it. Looking good. Now tighten all this up and adjust this. But we won't be doing that until we uh, start her up. So. Yeah, that's got a rugged spring on it. All right. Now, moving forward here. So it does. I was right. It does need two washers underneath there. Note the location of the six flat washers. 
So in here, we should have another washer in here and another washer in here. So I'm gonna do that. held a nut. Alright. So I'm going to open this up just a hair so I can work with it. So now, just like I said, or I thought, I should have been paying attention to the directions. Okay, now, let's see if I can get this in there without dumping it. No, I guess not. There we go, folks. Just like the book requested. By design. There we go. Perfect. So I noticed this is just peeking out a little further than I like to see it. So I'm gonna just squeeze that up a little bit. Okay, folks, so I just want to keep this little lead end on the cable centered. And it looks like I just need to squeeze this shut a little bit to keep that from uh, wandering off center. Like so. I like that better. See, now it's peeking out on the inside here. Perfect. All right. Now, on to the next thing. So the latches for the door handle. the doorknob here and here these are adjustable too so let's see where they attach It says use the two M4 by M10 flathead screws, two per latch. Oh, down here. They go way down here. See them? Down here.
Wow. I'm going to have to raise the, the saw head up for that. So folks, those go in right here. Then there's another one on this side. It's covered by this guard, you can't quite see it, but it's underneath there. Show it underneath. So this is showing this like this. These are going out away from them. So it shows these clips going like this. And these are uh, countersunk into the bracket. So the latches themselves don't need nuts because they're threaded uh, blocks of steel under there. So it's two screws for those going up under. So that block of steel is already threaded. So these are adjustable folks and you're going to have to adjust them to where they be and then there's a jam nut on there to lock them in place. 
I'll show you on the one I got out already. Oh, that's out. Okay, so you spin these in or out, no matter what adjustment you need. And then uh, you can tighten down the jam nut so it saves your adjustment. So that's how those work. And then just two screws into that threaded block under the, uh, the guard. So I'm kind of going at this left-handed here. Hopefully I don't lose a screw doing it. Strip the heads out of those. So now the door. These little guys are hard to hang on to with cold fingers. Alrighty then. So let me just see what we got here. So that needs a little tightening. Fit there. And on this side. Just turn those in to get a proper adjustment so they actually hold something. That one I got a little too tight, so I'll back it out a little. A couple turns, so that's good. The 
There's the top one. Now I'll come back and tighten the gym nut. It's a little warmer out. So lubrication tubing. So they just saw it going straight up to the water tank to this little block. And then down. Lubrication tubing. Route the tank to valve tubing from the blue ring fitting on the tank to the vertical barb fitting on the auto tube valve. Okay, so Guide block. Okay. I don't know if, which one's the longer one. This one's the longer one. So I don't know if that goes like this. No, I'm not sure what that's for. Wow. wow folks, I might need a heat gun to get that on there being so cold. I'm just going to leave it like it is for now. I might wait on this because of the cold weather, folks. Uh, need to get a heat gun on it to warm it up so I can get it all the way on there. But this, this just goes in as, as a static fit and there's little, it's kind of like a fuel line fitting. Uh, it's got little barbs on it that tie into it. And, uh, this goes here. So I'm going to wait on that, folks. Get some heat on it. Okay folks, so the video is getting a little long, uh, we'll get back at it another day, but got the battery box on, got the handle on, got the throttle done, got the door latches installed, still got to get the jam nuts uh, tightened up, and we'll do this on another day, but Northwind Garage, peace out. God bless you. We'll catch you on the next one, folks.